few months ago, I was booking a flight from Seattle to New York and uh, I had to change it last minute. So I called the airline. Actually, at first I used the app. I tried over the app, tried to change the flight, went through the whole process of changing the flight. After going through the process uh, of changing the flight, I refreshed the app. The flight, first flight had been completely canceled. It was a bug in the airline system. Over the course of like three hours, I talked to the airline over the phone. And at one point, they had me flying in the opposite direction. At another point, they had booked me a flight the following week. At one point, I was flying to Chicago, which was not where I was going. So TLDR, a lot of people are excited about AI for nuclear fusion, plasma containment, for uh, exploring the galaxy, uh, for solving climate change. I just really don't want to book a flight over the phone ever again. So my name is Nick Aldridge. I'm a principal engineer at AWS in the generative AI team. I'm part of the MCP steering committee. Uh, I work with really smart people like Mark Brooker and Swabi Siv Um, And I'm super excited to be here today. There we go. Um, topic of this talk is interagent communication on MCP. Uh, this is a controversial topic. My views are my own today. Uh, the steering committee downstairs is probably going to be upset at me, but that's OK. Uh, so this is how I would model that airline interaction. Like, I want an assistant that I say, hey, you, you book me a flight. I'm hoping the airline will have an assistant that handles that booking, uh, like an agent that handles that booking, and I will be totally out of the loop. Um, we can express this in the language of MCP today. Um, so what you see is a standard MCP diagram that's spruced up a little bit. Um, and this has normal MCP semantics. So you'll see like an MCP client, which we all know about, an MCP server, and a tool. What's new here is there are also some agent semantics. So you see agents in this diagram, and you see agent skills. Um, let's dig a little deeper. So what you see on the left-hand side, this should be super familiar, right? This is just an agent with an MCP client that can list tools and call tools. So this is a normal state. You can kind of imagine that that's my Nick's assistant. This, is, again, is a standard MCP interaction with a client calling a server. This is actually something different, though, right? Behind this tool, which I've nicknamed an agent skill, is another agent. So literally, in that tool method, I would have an agent call. And in the tool input parameters, I would have whatever the input parameters are of the agent. And in the tool description, I would have the agent description. So that's, that's kind of how I would, at a very high level, build this. Um, and we can make it a little more concrete. This is like what a sequence diagram would look like of building a more simple interaction. Here, I'm just asking for a status update. I don't want to go through the full sequence of booking a flight. But um, I'm the user. I call this Inquire API, which my Nix assistant vends. Nix assistant goes and talks to an LM, decides, hey, I actually need to call the airline agent to be able to handle this request, sends a, a tool call request to the airline agent. Airline agent calls an LLM, figures out it has to use the airline status check API or tool. Go ahead, call that tool. OK. Get back the flight status. Return, return, return. Right? So this is like a real thing you can, you can build today. And in fact, we sort of did. So we, we took Spring AI, which is a fantastic framework in Java for building, uh, building these kinds of things. Um, and this is what the airline agent would look like. So we have a uh, tool callback. So this is basically so that airline agent can integrate the tool status check. We also have the agent itself uh, on the right-hand side, which is super simple to write in, in Spring AI. This is what it would look like to then expose that agent as an MCP tool so that other people can call it with MCP. And then here, I connect it with my assistant agent. So assistant will have its own tool set. One of the tools will be this airline agent. And then I'll expose that as uh, a REST API that people can actually interact with, like my, me as a user could interact with. So that's pretty cool. I can also be able to actually like much more sophisticated inter-agent interactions on MCP. Here you see an agent that interacts with multiple other agents. Um, in fact, agent two at the top has 
two different agent skills, two different things it can do with different sets of input parameters, and I'm invoking them as separate tools on that MCP server. And agent three actually is populating a resource that uh, a client could consume later on. So like maybe a object in an S3 bucket, for example. So you can start to build some pretty sophisticated inter-agent interactions on MCP as it exists today. Now, some of you may be asking, why even use MCP for agents, right? Uh, there are other protocols out there. Why do we need to use MCP for agents? I think the first major reason is ease of integration. So um, I'm building an agent. I integrate tools with MCP. I have other agents in my ecosystem. It's super easy if I can use the exact same protocol to talk to those agents too, right? I don't have to learn new concepts and new semantics. Um, I can just use MCP, which I've already integrated. In addition, I predict that the differences between agents and tools will blur in the future. So we will start to see tools that are stateful, that are async, uh, that may call LLMs, right? And then we'll start to see agents, while we'll see very sophisticated ones, we'll also see agents which are single purpose, uh, which are stateless, which are synchronous. So the, the lines between agents and tools will blur. And in many ecosystems, it might not even make sense anymore to distinguish them. The third thing is um, MCP offers an awesome set of primitives. Things like transport, right? Streamable HTTP, which I'm sure some of you in the audience have worked on, um, off. These are fantastic building blocks to build uh, sophisticated applications on. Why do I, as a developer, as a company, want to learn a brand new set of semantics for uh, transport and for auth, for, just for handling agents, right? We can use these same building blocks and build on shared building blocks for agents as well. Fourth, MCP abstractions already extend well to agents. This is sort of what we saw at the beginning of this talk. And finally, um, there's a ton of existing functionality in MCP that provides really rich capabilities for agents. These are things like sampling, uh, right, cancellation, streaming. So we can build on these useful functionalities today and not reinvent the wheel. <clears throat> now, even though I think MCP is a really good place to build agents, it can still be better. Let's talk about some of the ways it can be better. Uh, the first one is for async communication. So agents are increasingly async. I'm sure many of you have async agents in production. And this is how kind of async works today in MCP. You have a persistent connection, right? And the server is streaming back like progress notifications. Um, this has a few challenges. The first one, as you might imagine, is, is reliability. Um, what happens if the client breaks, the connection breaks? What happens if the server breaks the connection because there's a deployment or something, then you have to go through a sophisticated mechanism of you know, populating buffered requests and whatnot. It's complicated, so reliability is a challenge. Second thing is scalability. Is my load balancer and API gateway and server gonna hang out with all these connections for potentially weeks while all those connections you know, are processed and drained? And finally, operational complexity. Oh, I wanna do a deployment, now I have a server that has a connection with a job that's gonna run for a week my deployment draining story is gonna be actually pretty challenging. So one way we can solve this is with client polling. Uh, this is a standard principle in, in async software development where the client essentially uh, asks for a status and pulls on it. This is what it would kind of look like in MCP. So client makes a call tool request, server makes a call tool response, and it provides a task ID. That task ID is gonna tell the client, hey, this is the thing you can go ask about later on. MCP client can then make a follow-up request. I'm not getting into the specifics of how that request would be modeled, but it can make a follow-up request asking for the status. Server can give back the status, and client can keep asking until the task is completed. And once it's completed, it can do operation four, which is fetch the result. So this would be awesome. Then we can get out of the realm of having to hang out with these connections for a long period of time. One of the benefits is that this would be really simple, right? Like all I need to do is uh, have a client and server respond with a task ID and I'm sort of done. I don't have to manage streaming and deployment training and whatnot. It also can solve most async workflows. So there's a ton of async workflows that can be modeled with client polling. 
Another solution is an event-driven architecture. So this is where the server is actually going to tell a predefined URL when it's done processing. So you talk, to, MCB client calls an MCB server, and it responds with, yes, I'm processing your message. The client also provides a URL where it says, you can send updates. You can send a notification to this URL when you're done. And after the server is finished processing, it sends a message to that URL or sends a result to that URL. This has some benefits, even over client polling. One is efficiency, right? The client doesn't have to send messages over a long period of time asking for status updates. It's just a single message when the server is done. The other one is performance. You can imagine that there's going to be a delay between client polls. Um, and so if you really care about performance, if you want to start the next, next task immediately when this one is done, then you're going to have to do uh, an event driven architecture. It also has some downsides. It's more complicated to implement. So um, there's definitely a trade off there. Now, the second way I think MCP could really improve for inter-agent communication is in the realm of resource sharing. So resources today, they don't have a state. It's just assumed that like, when a resource exists, that it's ready to be consumed. But that's not often or always the case, uh, especially in async architectures. A resource may be there, but it may be updated over the course of a period of time. Um, and there may be resources that are populated, but they're actually never ready to be consumed. They're like in a failed state. Um, so MCP doesn't have state. It also doesn't have a get operation. If I have a resource URI, there's no way for me to call and ask about that resource URI. I have to list all the resources to do so. Um, you can't pass around resources today. So call tool result only offers an embedded resource. You have to pass all the data of a resource back. So it's very limiting. Uh, I would love to be able to pass around references to resources. Um, and finally, there's no standard structure for resources. Like they have, they have some components, but um, if I want to really move to like a task-based, like agent-based model, I'll need more structure so that um, agents can uh, have a reliable way to know like when a task is completed, when a task is not completed. So this kind of brings me to the task-based resource model. This is like one, one potential way of solving this. Um, in this model, a client could send a, a call to a request, and a server could send in the response to that request, or like a server could create a resource and then send in the response to that request a resource reference with a status. And now a client can pull on the status of that resource, it can ask like, is it ready to be consumed? Is it ready to be consumed? Once it's ready, then the client can fetch it. So I think this architecture will actually become really common in MCP once resources have statuses. Um, one of the benefits obviously is we can model states, which is great. Um, the other thing is like, we can create broadly interoperable systems this way where um, we can really predict like what the current state of the other system is in sort of like a task sharing way. Uh, so this is, this is super useful. And lastly, um, capability discovery, I think, can grow a lot in MCP. Um, if you think about it, capability discovery for tools at least, um, it's probably abusing that term, but uh, for tools, capability discovery doesn't offer um, a bunch of the annotations we would want, right? Like streaming, um, state stateless or stateful, sync and async. These aren't things we can know from tool annotations, but as a client, these are things I must know because they're gonna be super important for how I handle a request. Um, so I think the basic solution is we need to make that tool annotation infrastructure much richer in MCP. So it should model these three things and probably other things. Um, food for thought, I also think it's going to be really not scalable to continue to add a zillion annotations over time. So I uh, would be interested to talk to folks about ideas on how to solve that problem. Um, the last thing I think we can do to make interacting with agents a lot better um, is introduce better abstractions. So some of you may it, it may be challenging to think about agents on MCP partially because of the semantics of it. Like tools don't sound like agents and MCP clients and servers don't sound like agents. Um, and I really like the work that the community has done on fast MCP. I think fast MCP is really cool. For those of you who don't know uh, what that is, fast MCP is not in the specification. It's a bunch of code that's written on top of the MCP SDK that makes it much easier to use MCP servers and clients. So I think we can introduce a similar abstraction, similar code for agents. And in particular, we can model things like tasks, agents, conversations, like, his, like lists of messages, um, models, LLMs, um, 
tool manager and skill manager, we can model these things explicitly in that library so that developers who are building agents get semantics that they're used to, as opposed to having to directly build on the MCP semantics, all while under the hood, concepts like auth and transport layer and whatnot are still behaving exactly the same. So TLDR, MCP can do agent-to-agent -agent communication. Um, it would be great if it's a little better. Like there are definitely things we can improve, like in async, resource sharing, and, and definitely better abstractions. Um, and would highly recommend you, know, you folks trying to stand up agents on MCP today. Um, there's a few QR codes that I've linked here. Um, one great one to join our Discord where we're having active discussion about some of these topics. Um, another one to check out a blog that uh, myself, Mark, and Swami put out recently about this topic. And then a third one to, to uh, actually the PR uh, page on GitHub. And this is a really important one. Um, there's a ton of PRs out there. The maintainers don't have time to review all of them uh, in, in, a, in a rapid fashion. So to the extent that you all can comment on PRs, contribute to PRs, even create your own, um, that will be really useful. Um, and that's my talk, thank you. <laughs>